So let's take a look at how you can set simple requirements for your scripts that will prevent people from running into trouble when they execute them. This is a special comment that you will put near the top. It doesn't have to be at the top, but it has to start like this. Pound, which is the line comment character, and then requires right after it. And then after that, you have different parameters that you can use to require different things. So if you want to find out more, I'm not going to cover everything, but if you want to find out more, you can type get help requires and read the whole help file on it. So if I run my script right now, you'll see that it doesn't run my right host code. Instead, it says the script requires.ps1 cannot be run because it contains a requires statement for running as administrator. So you'll see that it evaluates these from bottom to top. So I have a param parameter here that says run as administrator. And this makes sure that the session in which the user is running the script has administrative privileges. If we had administrative privileges, obviously we wouldn't see that message. It would go on to the next issue. So let's just get rid of that right now since we don't want to require that. So now we have requires PS snap-in. Now snap-ins were the predecessor to modules. They're compiled bits of code that give you extra functionality in PowerShell and let you do other things. So I believe one of the first snap-ins was uh, exchange snap-in, I think. I might be guessing a little bit there. But they're um, required for certain commandlets to be accessible or certain features to be accessible. And you want to make sure that people have them loaded in PowerShell before they try to run your script that uses those features and bits of code. So you can do that by using requires, PS snap-in, and then supplying the snap-in name. And you can also set the version of snap-in. So as these snap-ins are developed, there are different versions. And if you're using a feature that's in one version and it may not be in another one, you might want to require that version. But we're not loading any snap-ins. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. You can also require modules, and modules are those very easy to create code packages for PowerShell. So you can create a module that does a whole bunch of nifty stuff and share it with people, and they can import it into PowerShell so that they can use your uh, script commandlets and other bits of code. And if your module is not loaded in PowerShell, because you can you can type get module you can see what modules you have access to but they may they may not be loaded into powershell if the person has the module in their system and it's not loaded requires will automatically load that module so it has that extra layer of trying to get things right in the environment if it doesn't then you'll get an error message like this one saying can't run because it contained requires um oh it actually skipped that one. I'm not sure why I did that. I thought it went from bottom to top. Either way, it. Uh, let's see if we can get it to break because I don't have. Do I have a module called Potato? No, because there is no module that is called Potato. So there you go. Now there's also Shell ID. I'm not exactly sure how the Shell ID works. I think it's uh, because there's a lot of different flavors of PowerShell. So. Um, there's a bit of software called Power GUI, and I believe that it would have its own shell ID. You can look at your shell ID by typing sh uh, dollar sign shell ID, which is a static variable in PowerShell. And we can see here it's just Microsoft.PowerShell. But I think if you were using Power GUI, they might have their own shell ID or the other flavors of the PowerShell shell. So that allows you to set what sort of environment you're working in, and they all have different things that they can do in them. So I think that that's what that's for. I wasn't able to find a lot of information about it, and the help doesn't really tell you, but I think that's what it's for. And then we come down to the one that you may find to be most important, which is the version of PowerShell. So if I set this to four, We'll see that my code runs fine because I'm running PowerShell 4, like so. But if I change this to 5, uh-oh, 
we can't do it because I don't have PowerShell 5. PowerShell 5 doesn't exist yet, as far as I know. But here's the thing. If you use lesser versions, like say we require PowerShell 2, it will allow that. So versions that are less than what you have will be acceptable. It only checks for versions above what you already have on your system. So that is the require statement. It's a, it's a really simple way to sort of control what environment your users are running their scripts in, whether you need to make sure that they have a module or a snap and loaded, whether they need administrative privileges because they're doing things in certain parts of the file system or working um, with other protected systems and making sure that they have the right version because there are different commandlets in each version. So it's very simple, very handy, and that's it. Thanks for watching.